Welcome back, Alex! Exclamation point. I was wondering about the current state of direct storage. It seems like every game that implements it has issues, even though the API is years old at this point. Will things ever get better? Do we need a new standard to complicate things further? I think, you know, ultimately, almost literally, DirectX Ultimate, DirectX 12 Ultimate, and um, direct storage. Well, direct storage has been a disappointment, hasn't it? Yeah, I'd guess say more so direct storage's GPU decompression from the coverage of us covering primarily NVIDIA GPUs the last couple of years. Uh, if you've noticed my reviews, only when it's very pertinent to the information at hand will I do an NV versus AMD comparison. And the reason for that is because I polled our audience like three years ago and I said like, what part of the review is the most important thing? <laughs> and that was literally at the bottom of the list of things in terms <laughs> of what everyone voted for. So I stopped doing it. Um, but uh, the things have been different. Uh, I think in the ratcheting, like for, for example, one of the things that we've noticed is that the only people that were implementing GPU direct storage decompression were Nixies. And that was one data point from one developer and if they did something wrong or the driver implementation for their games wasn't good or something like that, we would be talking about generically GPU decompression from the only one, you know, kind of input of data there. We didn't have a lot of developers. And we still don't actually have a lot of developers using GPU decompression. And there's probably a lot of reasons for that. Um, too much to go into, at least for this one answer right here. But I would say generically, I'm disappointed in a uh, GPU decompression just because I would have loved to have seen more implementations of it so that I actually do some greater cross comparisons. Uh, if you want to do see some more benchmarks regarding GPU decompression, uh, the, the YouTube page and person, CompuSemble, has had a number of them and they recently reported that the most recent version of direct storage improves uh, frame time consistency on NVIDIA GPUs, at least with their using a reference card of an RTX 5090, for the example in the Nixies games. So that may be a thing. I have yet to test it myself, uh, but there has been over time, it has gotten a little bit better, but it's still not in a place where I would like to see it, um, at least on NVIDIA. Um, in general, I'd say the state is like, eh, eh. I'm happy though that the other aspect of, of direct storage is there to make SSDs more readily usable. Uh, and not have to go through the entire Windows I.O. stack. So it's reducing CPU burden. Uh, and CPU decompression, given how many extra cores we have on PC, typically in a good gamer PC, like something with eight plus cores, uh, especially if you're running on Intel, you got those E cores. It's presumably, it would be great to see decompression being done on CPU when it can, because that's what we have on PC. As for the future of direct storage, I think... Um, we have yet to see any movement whether or not they add custom decompression blocks like they do on console. Uh, the Nintendo Switch 2 has it, and they run NVIDIA, but that's a custom thing maybe. Or rather, I'm more interested now in the versions of machine learning texture compression and representation because that is the largest compute um, uplift we've seen essentially since 2018 in our GPUs is how much machine learning performance they can do. And, and if we could leverage that instead to do something very similar while still using the bones of direct storage, maybe it's just a different decompression format, for example, that is added into the rec storage at some point. Uh, well, that'd be great because then we would actually see the equivalent of hardware assisted decompression. Whereas right now all the decompression is occurring in a generic compute shader through G deflate, um, which could have scheduling issues. Whereas maybe a machine learning thing wouldn't have those issues because those units are not being used at the same time in a frame. So mm, interesting. Yeah. I don't know. There's, I'm, I'm actually way more interested in that. And based on what I, what I saw the throughput, and I might have sent a, a DM to a certain someone who knows a lot about this. The throughput of machine learning decompression is a lot, lot higher, like a lot, lot higher than the PCIe bandwidth, for example. So um, that should be interesting if we do get into that. Um, but that's where I'd hope the trajectory goes right now, based upon what we've seen so far. But we've seen so few implementations that my disappointment is actually limited to actually a very select grouping of titles. Right. Mm -hmm. Oliver, it's, it's, it's quite interesting. I think that, you know, everything that was sort of promised for this console generation, um, the SSD side of things is 
arguably the thing that's been sort of least utilized because, you know, going back to the original Mark Cerny presentation, it was all about, you know, having a storage system that was so fast, you could, you know, spool in data at the beginning of a frame, have it available to process mid frame and then get it onto the, onto the screen at sort of record speeds that we'd never seen before. I think arguably the, the thing we've sort of seen most of all is drastically reduced loading times specifically on PlayStation 5, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's probably the main benefit of games this generation. Also, I think we've seen, obviously, I mean, the Insomniac games would come to mind in terms of games that actually did make significant use of the SSD to enable new gameplay systems and yeah. new kinds of asset swapping, moving into different worlds, stuff like that. That's been very cool. But in general, there has not been a huge amount of progress in that front. I guess, you know, you're really looking at a very different game design paradigm there. You're looking at a very different kind of like development paradigm, trying to make a game that um, is going to shift players in kind of a nonlinear fashion through different worlds, through things like this. So I, I just think it's it's a it's a big kind of problem to tackle, and I'm not really sure that modern games are really set up to do that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, mostly it's been it's been constrained to loading times, uh, things like that. We've not really seen too much on the on the game design front. Games on PlayStation Five and Series X are are pretty similar to games on PlayStation Four and, and Xbox One.